Well, thank you very much. We're here with the leaders of the restaurant industry. It's a, an industry that's been tremendously impacted by what's happening with COVID. So uh, I thank you all for being here. We'll take a couple of questions, John. And if you have any questions for these great restaurateurs, please ask. Oh, well, Mr. President, first a question for you. Attorney General Barr says he is unlikely to have any criminal investigation of either Barack Obama or Joe Biden. You've been talking about what you call the greatest political crime uh, in American history. What do you think of Mr. Barr's decision? Here? Well, I think if it was me, they would do it. I think uh, for them, maybe they're not going to. I don't know. I'm surprised because uh, Obama knew everything that was happening. I don't think ba Obama knows where he, where he uh, you know, is in a lot of ways. I saw his statements the other day, and I think that, frankly, they weren't very good. That's President Obama. Uh, as far as uh, Biden's concerned, I can't — that I can't tell you. Only he knows what he knows. I don't think he knows too much. But I think Obama and Biden knew about it. Uh, they were participants, but uh, — so I'm a little surprised by that statement. I don't think he said it quite the way you said it. I think he said, as of this moment, I guess. But if it was me, I guarantee they'd be going after me. Uh, in his case, uh, they're not. So I think it's just a continuation of a double standard. I'm surprised by it. I'm surprised by it. But uh, that's where it is. And I don't know what he said about the others. You have to understand, I was coming into this room as that statement was being made. So I don't know exactly. He, he said, we cannot allow this process, the legal process, to be hijacked by efforts to drum up criminal allegations, investigations of either candidate. Uh, he seemed to be suggesting that Well, I think you'd have to ask him what that means, because I'm in no position to tell you that. I've stayed away from it. I'm relying on the attorney general to do the job. And uh, so I don't know exactly what he said, because I was in this room. Disappointed if there is no criminal investigation of Biden or Obama. I don't say disappointed or not, but I have no doubt that they were uh, involved in this uh, hoax, one of the worst things ever to befall uh, this country in terms of political scandal. I have absolutely no doubt that Obama and Biden were involved. And uh, as to whether or not it was criminal, I would think it would be uh, very serious, very, very serious. Uh, it was a uh, takedown of a president, regardless of me. It happened to be me. And in my opinion, it was an illegal takedown. And uh, But I'm going to let the Attorney General make all of those decisions. I've stayed out of it because it's the appropriate thing to do. I wouldn't have to stay out of it, as you know, but I've decided to stay out of it. Uh, so uh, I would say that uh, I heard that just a little while ago, a few minutes ago. I'll have to look at it exactly as to what was said, what was meant, I will say this, uh, we have an honorable attorney general. He's going to do an honorable job. He's a very honorable man, and he's going to do a very honorable job. Uh, but I am surprised only in that I have no doubt. Personally, I have no doubt. But he may have another feeling. I have no doubt that they were involved in it. It's a hoax. It started off with a Russian hoax. It went to uh, a Ukraine hoax. It's just a whole big disgrace. and. This country has better things to do. It's a disgrace. What they've done to this country with these phony investigations, the Mueller investigation was a uh, waste of time from day one. They knew it was a waste of time. It proved to be a waste of time. Uh, I think there are a lot of bad people involved, and they should pay a very big price if they were caught. So we'll see what happens. But I rely on the Attorney General. He's a very honorable man. Okay, any other questions? Peter Navarro, who said the CDC let the country down in terms of testing? I think they work very hard. Don't forget, they've been here for many years. It's not — they don't work for me. They work for the country. They've uh, — they've worked very hard. Uh, we — when we took over in terms of, you know, getting involved, Mike headed up the task force. He worked with CDC. And I could ask Mike to give you a part — you know, part of it. But I will say they originally — they had no test. And one of the tests had a problem very early on, but that was quickly remedied, and now we have the best tests anywhere in the world. I think we — I give ourselves a lot of that credit. A lot of the brilliant people that worked on testing, a lot of the brilliant people that worked on the ventilators to a point where we have the best testing in the world, we have the best ventilators and distribution in the most ventilators in the world. It's not even close. Uh, so I can't uh, — I would like to ask Mike that question. CDC, you work with them all the time, certainly much more than I do, Mike. Oh, we do, uh, Mr. President. And uh, let me say, I think, I think Peter Navarro's point 
uh, was uh, that uh, CDC and our public health labs at the state level were operating uh, with an arcane testing system. And it was one of the reasons why early on uh, we brought in all of the commercial labs around the country. The president created a consortium of these commercial labs. And we reinvented testing in America. Uh, that's the reason why at the end of February, we had done a total of 8,400 tests uh, at that time using state public labs and the CDC labs. But because of uh, the president's efforts uh, with, uh, with basically innovating testing in America, we now reached 11 million tests. I think you heard the statistics more than 400,000 tests uh, yesterday. And we're actually hearing, as the president said earlier, we're hearing reports of excess capacity uh, that uh, I think the state of New York, Governor Cuomo reported that he has the ability to test 15,000 people a day, but they were only testing 5,000 people. We're, we've heard the same reports from Florida and other states around the country. But again, it, it's uh, all a testament to the fact that President Trump essentially brought in the power of the private marketplace private laboratories reinvented testing in America, and that's how we've been able to be at a place where as we talk about opening up America, every state in America today has the testing capacity and the supplies uh, to be able to move into phase one reopening. And we're gonna to continue to make that a reality. We've made a lot of governors look very good, that I can tell you. Uh, I'm reading some of the reviews on some of the governors and they're getting these reviews, well, we were able to get them ventilators that they didn't have. We were able to get them testing that they still wouldn't have. We were able to get them a lot of things that they didn't have, including helping them fill up their stockpiles, who, which really they should have had done. They, didn't, they weren't supposed to be using us for that. But we've made a lot of governors look very good, and that's frankly good because it's good for our country. Okay. President, why yeah. did you pass up an opportunity to speak to the World Health Organization earlier, their virtual meeting today? I chose not to make a... Uh, statement today. I'll be giving them a statement sometime in the near future, but I'm, I chose not to give a statement. I think they've done a uh, very sad job in the last period of time. And again, the United States uh, pays them $450 million a year. China pays them $38 million a year. And they're a puppet of China. They're uh, China-centric, to put it nicer, but they're a puppet of China. And I think they've done a very, even when I did the ban, Mike remembers this very well. When I did the ban, they thought it was inappropriate to do. I did a ban very early. If I didn't do that ban, you would have lost hundreds of thousands of more people in this country. It was a very important ban. People don't like talking about the ban. Uh, but it was very important. I was the only one that wanted to do it. And we did it, and we saved thousands of lives, hundreds of thousands of lives, probably. And uh, Dr. Fauci said that, and other people said that. Deborah said that, you know that. But uh, the World Health Organization was against it. They were against me doing the ban. They were against They said, you don't need it. It's too much. It's too severe. It's too all of these things. And they turned out to be wrong. Sleepy Joe Biden said the same thing. He came out. He said, I was xenophobic. You believe that one, Tillman? I was xenophobic because I said, you can't come in if you come from China. You can't come into our country very early. And Biden said I was xenophobic town in San Francisco at the same time. <laughs> uh, this is my guy. <laughs> we always got along, didn't we? <laughs> the twins, they call us. So, uh, no, it's, uh, it's a very sad, a very sad thing. So, I'm not uh, happy with the World Health Organization. And guess what? There's some of the people around this table who would understand being in a business, in some cases international. I'm not happy with the World Trade Organization at all either. Explain, sir, why you decided to fire the Inspector General at the State Department. Yeah, uh, I don't know him at all. I never even heard of him. But uh, I was asked to by the State Department, by Mike. Uh, I offered uh, most of my people, almost all of them, I said, you know, these are Obama appointees, and if you'd like to let him go, I think you should let him go, but that's up to you. He's an Obama employee. I understand he had a lot of problems with the DOD. There was an investigation on him, on the... Uh, Inspector General. I don't know anything about it. So I don't know him. Uh, never heard of him. But they asked me to uh, terminate him. I have the absolute right as president to terminate. Uh, I said, who appointed him? And they said, President Obama. I said, look, I'll terminate him. Uh, I don't know what's going on other than that. But you'd have to ask Mike Pompeo. 
Okay. But they did ask me to do it, and I did it. I have the right to terminate uh, the inspector generals. And what, I, I would have, I would have suggested, and I did suggest in pretty much all cases, you get rid of the attorney generals because it happens to be very political, whether you like it or not. And many of these people were Obama appointments, and uh, so I just. Uh, got rid of them. And you've got some criticism from Democrats in Congress who are saying this is a pattern of you trying yeah, to avoid having accountability. Yeah, and if I didn't fire them, they would have criticized me, too. They'd criticize no matter what you do. You know, if you have too many ventilators, they'll say, gee, he has too many ventilators. If you don't have enough, they'll say he doesn't have enough. No matter what you do, uh, between that and their partner, the fake news media, they'll find something. Now, I don't know the gentleman. Um, I was... Uh, happy to do it. Mike uh, requested that I do it. Uh, he should have done it a long time ago, in my opinion. He's an Obama appointment, and he had some difficulty. But uh, I just don't know who he is. I really, I don't know. I never heard his name. Do you believe there is a role for inspector generals to keep an administration like yeah, yours or anyone else as accountable? Sure, but I think they have to be fair. And I think it's a death wish when you, and I told my people, I said, I think you should you know, study your situation, but let us know. I think we've been treated very unfairly by inspector generals. Uh, I can go into instances, but I'm not going to do it now. But the inspector generals, when they're put in by Obama, just like it could be that if they were put in by me and it was somebody else's administration, especially the other party, it could very well be that you'd be treated unfairly. But we've had a lot of cases where we thought that was unfair. Uh, so, yeah, they... Uh, asked me to do that. I, I think the big thing is that they should have asked me to do it a long time ago. You said you don't know him, sir. What was he doing that was treating you unfairly? I don't know. I don't know anything about him. I don't know. I don't know anything about him other than uh, the State Department and Mike in particular. I guess they weren't happy with the job he's doing or something. So because it's my right to do it, I said, sure, I'll do it. I've gotten rid of a lot of inspector generals. Every president has. I think every president has gotten rid of probably more than I have. Um, a lot of our people kept the Obama inspector general, and I think, generally speaking, that's not a good thing to do, but they've kept them. But I told them for three years, I said, anybody wants to get rid of their inspector generals because they were appointed by President Obama, I think you should do so. Some of them didn't, but now they're doing, a couple of them are doing it now. Yeah, go ahead. There is an appearance of a conflict of interest with Secretary Pompeo is asking you to fire an inspector general. That I can't tell you. I don't, I don't think so. I think maybe he thinks he's being treated unfairly. Uh, again, he wanted to, he asked me if that would be possible. I said, I'll do that, sure. I think it should have been done a long time ago, frankly. And this is a man that uh, has had some controversy, this inspector general. But uh, so again, I don't know anything. I haven't even read much about him. I see that it's a little bit of a story, not much of a story, because everybody agrees that I have the absolute right to fire the inspector generals. I think they should have done it a long time ago. Yes, please. Mr. President, some of these executives today told you they expect the recovery to be a little bumpy, it could take a, take a little while. Are you forecasting a faster bounce back? I think they're forecasting a very fast bounce back. I mean, I see great optimism. These are big restaurant people that are uh, really up on the business. They're very successful. They've been very successful. They'll be, I think, even more successful again, especially if we get deductibility. And uh, no, I, I really enjoyed this. I mean, this was a long meeting for me. You know, normally I wouldn't say at a meeting this long, Tillman, but I liked hearing about your, your great basketball team. I didn't know those guys got paid 40. I thought they made 25. That's interesting. For, for the record, for my casino in Louisiana opened up today, and it opened up extremely, extremely busy in Louisiana. So, so that's good to know that people are coming out. So That's great. What you do works. You know, I, I've watched you for a long time, and what you do works. We're very proud of you. I appreciate great that. Great job. Sir, you sounded, I sounded genu genuinely surprised about this PPP extension proposal. Why was I surprised? You mean that they'd ask for it? Why would I be surprised? You surprised that they they want, of course, they'd they ask for that over the. Surprised uh, that's all they ask for, actually. I know too many of these people. Uh, I'm surprised that's all they ask for. No, I think what they're asking for is very reasonable, Steve. You know, I mean, we're going to have to go and get it approved. And again, we, we're, we've saved and we'll continue to save the restaurant business. And ultimately, we'll be paid back many, many times because they pay a lot of taxes. You know? And they really they create tremendous numbers of jobs. Think of that. You know, 600, 650,000 restaurants? Who would think that's even possible? 
you made a final decision to fully defund the w, our contribution to the WHO going forward? Well, I have a uh, concept because we paid 450000 and somebody came out because we have different uh, ideas. One was that, uh, I mean, I could ask these brilliant people. Uh, so we help fund the World Health Organization. We use it like everyone else does. They gave us a lot of very bad advice, terrible advice. They were wrong so much, always on the side of China. China paid $40 million last year, and we've been paying $450 million a year for many years. Somehow that doesn't work out too well. So I was thinking about bringing our 450 down to 40. And some people thought that was too much. So uh, we're going to make a decision fairly soon. But I think it's very unfair when we're paying 450. For many, many years, we've been paying 300, 400, 450, almost 500 sometimes. And, uh, and we're not treated right. And we're not treated by world trade. We're not treated right either. The World Trade Organization. China there is considered a developing nation. If you're a developing nation, you get massive tax advantages and other advantages. Well, I want the United States to be a developing nation then, okay? We should get the same advantages as China gets. Why should China get advantages over the United States? Because they got somebody to say they're a developing nation. Uh, and so uh, that's under review also. President, Secretary Pompeo was reportedly under investigation both for having staffers do personal errands like walking his dog and picking up his dry cleaning and concerns that he may have subverted the will of Congress with Saudi uh, deals with Saudi arms deals. Uh, are you concerned that, that he may have made this request to avoid uh, an investigation? Well, I don't know anything about it. I, I heard about it at the same time. Maybe you heard about it. I don't know anything about it. I mean, you mean he's under investigation because he had somebody walk his dog from the government? I don't know. It doesn't sound, I don't think it sounds like that important. I mean, you have a man that's supposed to be, and he's a brilliant guy, number one at West Point, number one at Harvard, I believe, Harvard Law School or close. And, but he was number one at West Point, number one at Harvard Law School, or very close to number one. And they're bothered because he's having somebody walk his dog, as you're telling me. I didn't know that. I didn't hear that. I didn't know about an investigation. But this is what you get with the Democrats. Here's a man supposed to be negotiating war and peace with major, major countries, with weaponry like the world has never seen before. And the Democrats and the fake news media, they're interested in a man who's walking their dog. And maybe he's busy. And maybe he's negotiating with Kim Jong-un, okay, about nuclear weapons, so that he'd say, please, could you walk my dog? Do you mind walking my dog? I'm talking to Kim Jong-un, or I'm talking to President Xi about paying us for some of the damage they've caused to the world and to us. Please walk my dog. To who? A Secret Service person or somebody, right? I don't know. I think this country has a long way to go. They, they, the priorities are really screwed up when I read this. Now, I don't know anything about the investigation, but you just tell me about walking a dog and what'd you say, doing dishes? Saudi arms deals, sir. What Saudi arms deals? Explain. Passed, Congress passed a law to restrict uh, sales to Saudi Arabia over certain arms out yeah. concern over their use in the money crisis. So the question is whether Secretary Pompeo tried to subvert the uh, the deal with actions that he may have taken on. I don't deal. think so. I mean, I think that when somebody pays us a fortune for, you know, arms, we should get the deal done. I will tell you that. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. I know this, that we have countries that want to buy our arms and we make it so difficult for them that they end up going to Russia and China. And under my administration, if they're friendly countries, I try and make it as easy as possible. If they want to buy our fighter jets and if they want to give us billions and billions of dollars and they have other alternatives, including China, Russia and others, I think we should make it as easy as possible for them and we should take the jobs and take the money because it's billions of dollars. And in past administrations, they waited so long that people wouldn't even want to do business with us. And one of the things that we've done, and we make the greatest equipment in the world by far, and especially now under this administration, because we've upped the scale a lot, as you know, and we bought a lot, we've totally rearmed our military, $1.5 trillion. But uh, if somebody wants to give us billions of dollars to buy an airplane, or a number of airplanes and missiles and all of the other things that we make better than anybody in the world, we should take the money and we should make the deals fast. 
I would certainly say that. Even if it, it leads to human rights. Why don't you take your mask off? I, you know, you just for a second, please. Don't worry really about Jeff. Jeff, why don't you move out of his way so he doesn't infect you, please? Sure. I don't even want if you it, to become infected. Even if it results in human rights abuses, that was Congress's concern with these human rights abuses. I don't know that. I don't know. I mean, you know, you tell me something that I never heard of. Now you're talking about human rights abuses. You know, you'll figure something out, I'm sure. Look, he's a high quality person. Mike, he's a very high quality, he's a very brilliant guy. And now I have you uh, telling me about dog walking, washing dishes. And you know what? I'd rather have him on the phone with some world leader than have him wash dishes because maybe his wife isn't there or his kids are there. You know, what are you telling me? It's terrible. It's so stupid. You know how stupid that sounds to the world? Unbelievable. Okay, yeah. Actually, to uh, President Obama's uh speeches over, over the weekend. And look, I think he was an incompetent president. I think President Obama was one of the worst presidents in the history of our country. I think he was an incompetent president. I know what he left us. He left us a broken military. He left us a military that ISIS was all over the place, and I got rid of it. I, did, I knocked out 100 percent of the caliphate, and even you will admit that, John. And when I came in, it was a mess. But we had a broken military. We had a depleted military. We had uh, little on the shelves, if you talk about pandemics. We had a country that was a mess. We were paying high taxes. We were paying, and outside of this artificial event that took place two months ago, and I'm going to build the country into stronger and better than it was even then. And it's already happening, and you can see it. You can see it today. Just take a look at the stock market. Look at what's going on. Look at the great numbers that are being called, and look at these medical companies calling in. And we're talking about more than one. So many things are happening. But I think President Obama was an incompetent president. He did a terrible job. And by the way, there was great division in our country with President Obama. You didn't see it as much, but there was tremendous division in our country. Okay? There's division now, too, right? I think we'll have great, yeah. You know, success brings. We had a great success going. Things were really going along, and then uh, China gave us a wonderful gift, okay? And it wasn't pretty. What? It came out of China, just in case you had any questions, John. It didn't come out of — came out of China, spread to Europe, but also came here. And uh, the whole world became infected by this uh, horrible thing that they unleashed one way or the other. Not a good situation. Not a good situation. I'm not a man that likes taking that. What happened to us, and it was totally preventable. They could have stopped it at the source. They knew it was happening. We wanted to go in. Others wanted to go in. They wouldn't let. They wouldn't let the world, as you know, they wouldn't let. They wouldn't let other other countries go in. They wanted. Other countries wanted to. World Health wanted to. In all fairness to World Health, they wouldn't let World Health in. And we're a part of World Health. They wouldn't let them in either. They could have stopped it at the source, and they chose not to. And yet, they stopped them from going to Wuhan into different parts of China. So you couldn't go into Beijing. What do you think of that, Tillman? You couldn't go into China. But I better not get you involved in a China thing. You've got enough problems with streets in China are back, though. I'm They're asking, all good business. <laughs> I'm asking the, an interesting guy that question. But seriously, look, they wouldn't let him into China. But they'd let him into Europe, and they'd let him into all over the world, including the United States. It's lucky I did the ban. That's all I can tell you. It's lucky I did the ban. Uh, okay, how about one or two more? Yeah. How you're going to specifically make China be held responsible? If well, I'm not going to tell you that question. Why would I tell you? Go ahead. Will they be held responsible? Will you, will you take steps yeah, to hold China? China should be held responsible for what they've done. Uh, they have hurt the world very, very badly. They've hurt themselves also. But they've hurt the world very, very badly. Yeah, they should be held responsible. Okay. You tweeted recently that this whole whistleblower racket needs to be looked at very sure. closely, and it is causing sure. great injustice. Sure. I had a fake whistleblower. Sure. I had a fake whistleblower originally. He was a faker because when he looked at my, he wrote down a conversation that was totally different from the conversation I actually had with the president of Ukraine. It was a fake whistleblower. And by the way, everybody knows who he is. He's a political operative. You know that. John knows who he is. You know him better than anybody, John, right? He's a faker, and he was a fake whistleblower, and it was a phony, disgraceful period of time. 
And we came out well. You know why we came out well? Because everyone recognized it for what it was, just a political witch hunt. But he was a fake. We're going to specifically make China be held responsible? If well, I'm not going to tell you that question. Why would I tell you? Go ahead. Will they be held responsible? Will you, will you take steps yeah, to hold China China should be held responsible for what they've done. Uh, they have hurt the world very, very badly. They've hurt themselves also, but they've hurt the world very, very badly. Yeah, they should be held responsible. Okay. You tweeted recently that this whole whistleblower racket needs to be looked at very sure. closely, and it is causing sure. great injustice. Sure. I had a fake whistleblower. And harm. Sure. Who I had a fake whistleblower originally. He was a faker because when he looked at my, he wrote down a conversation that was totally different from the conversation I actually had with the president of Ukraine. It was a fake whistleblower. And by the way, everybody knows who he is. He's a political operative. You know that. John knows who he is. You know him better than anybody, John, right? He's a faker, and he was a fake whistleblower, and it was a phony, disgraceful period of time. And we came out well. You know why we came out well? Because everyone recognized it for what it was, just a political witch hunt. But he was a fake whistleblower. He wrote a story that bore no resemblance to the conversation that I had with the president of UK Ukraine. Nothing whatsoever. And by the way, the inspector general, he went by the whistleblower. He didn't want to see the conversation that I had. When he saw the conversation that I had, he said, well, that bears no resemblance to what the whistleblower said. Why did he look first before he ran to Congress? He ran to Congress like uh, he couldn't get there fast enough with a whistleblower report. But when they offered him to see the actual conversation, and we called the head of Ukraine, and we said, we'd like to expose the conversation that we had, if you don't mind. He said, what was wrong with that? That conversation, as I say, was perfect. It was a perfect conversation. Not a thing said wrong. That's why we had, other than a half a vote from Romney, and Romney's, you know, loser, but other than a half a vote we had from Romney, I got 52 and a half percent to a half. In the House, we got 196 to nothing, 196 to nothing. The Republicans were so unified, not because they all liked me, but because they knew this was a horrible thing that happened. But he was a fake whistleblower. He reported on a conversation that didn't happen, just like Shifty Schiff. Shifty Schiff went up before Congress, and because he has immunity, in other words, you can't put him in jail if he lies, in front, because they have immunity in the halls of Congress, in the Great Hall. So he made a, sh a statement that was totally different from what I said. You know that. Eight times quid pro quo. There were no quid pro quos, nothing, zero. Eight times, over and over again. And he made it as though that was the conversation. But he knew that wasn't the conversation I had. And any place else, he would have been thrown out of office and put in jail for what he did. But he had immunity because he made it in the halls. It should be the opposite. If you make a statement like that, if you lie in Congress, you should get double penalties, OK? So, you know, that's the way it goes. So you had a phony whistleblower. And this other guy with the hydroxychloroquine, OK? Well, he, uh, he went out. And he's the one that approved the hydroxychloroquine. He's the one that signed the application. He also happens to be, if you look, uh, see whether or not, I, I won't put it on me, I'll put it on you. See whether or not he was a big contributor to the Democrats. See whether or not he wanted the Democrats to win. No, there's a lot of bad things coming out about him. Uh, but you people don't want to write the, the news, you know. But if you look, but he's the one that signed the application. The very important form, he signed it. Now, if he doesn't believe in it, why would he sign it? And a lot of good things have come out about the hydroxy. A lot of good things have come out. And you'd be surprised at how many people are taking it, especially the frontline workers, before you catch it. The frontline workers, many, many are taking it. I happen to be taking it. I happen to be taking it. I'm taking it, hydroxychloroquine. Right now, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I started taking it. Because I think it's good. I've heard a lot of good stories. And if it's not good, I'll tell you right, I'm not going to get hurt by it. It's been around for 40 years for malaria, 
for lupus, for other things. I take it. Frontline workers take it. A lot of doctors take it. Excuse me. A lot of doctors take it. I take it. Now, I hope to not be able to take it soon because, you know, I hope they come up with some answer. But I think people should be allowed to. I got a letter from a doctor the other day from Westchester, New York, around the area. He didn't want anything. He just said, sir, I have hundreds of patients, and I give them hydroxychloroquine. I give them the z pack which is zithromycin, and I give them zinc. And out of the hundreds of patients, many hundreds, over 300 patients, I've, I haven't lost one. He said, please keep pressing that, sir. Uh, and if you look at that phony report that was put in, that report on the hydroxy was given to people that were in extraordinarily bad condition. Extraordinarily bad. People that were dying. No, I, I think, for whatever it's worth, I take it. I was, uh, I, I would have told you that three, four days ago, but we never had a chance because you never asked me the question. Are you the White House doctor that? recommend that you take that? Is that why you're Yeah, White House doctor. I didn't recommend. No, I asked him, what do you think? He said, well, if you'd like it. I said, yeah, I'd like it. I'd like to take it. A lot of people are taking it. A lot of frontline workers are taking hydroxychloroquine. A lot of front, I don't take it because, hey, People said, oh, maybe he owns the company. No, I don't own the company. You know what? I want the people of this nation to feel good. I don't want them being sick. And there's a very good chance that this has an impact, especially early on. But you look at frontline workers, you look at doctors and nurses, a lot of them are taking it as a preventative. And they're taking, totally unrelated, but they take the z pack or the zithromycin for possible infection. Now, I haven't taken that other than an original dose because the, all you need, you don't have to take it simultaneously. But the zinc you do take. So I'm taking the two, the zinc and the hydroxy. And all I can tell you is, so far, I seem to be okay. Can you explain, sir, though, why you started taking it? Have you been exposed? Yeah, because, no, no, not at all. I just said that I've had so many letters from people like the one I told you about, I got it last week. I'll give you, would you like a copy of it? I'd love to give you, if you ask Bali, she'll give you a copy of it. But this is a doctor, he doesn't want anything. I don't know him, never heard of him. But he treats people that are, that we're talking about. And he said out of hundreds of people that he's treated, he hasn't lost one. And he just wanted me to know about it, that's all. It wasn't, he wasn't saying, gee, could I have dinner with you, Mr. President? I'd like to come to the White House. But I've received many such letters. I've received a lot of positive letters. And it seems to have an impact. And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But if it doesn't, you're not going to get sick or die. This is a, a uh, pill that's been used for a long time, for 30, 40 years on the malaria and on lupus, too. And even on arthritis, I guess, from what I understand. So it's been heavily tested in terms of, uh, I was just waiting to see your eyes light up when I said this. But you know, when I announce this. But yeah, I've taken it for about a week and a half now, and uh, I'm still here. I'm still here. Can you explain, sir, though, you, what is the evidence that it has a preventative effect? Here we go. You ready? Here's my evidence. I get a lot of positive calls about it. The only negative I've heard was the study where they gave it, was it the VA, with, you know, people that aren't big Trump fans gave it, and we've done the greatest job, maybe, of anything in the VA because I got VA choice and VA accountability, both approved. Accountability, Tillman, is where you can fire bad people that work in the VA, that you couldn't fire them. We had thousands of people that were sadists, that were stealing, that were robbers, that were horrible people. They would beat up our veterans. They couldn't do it in prime time, but they did it when they were sick. And we got accountability. Nobody thought you could get it because of the unions and civil service. I got it passed so that now, you fire bad people in the VA. We got rid of tremendously bad people that should have never been there. But I also got probably even more importantly, if you can say that, maybe not, VA choice. So if you have to wait online for a doctor, you go outside, you have a private doctor, we pay the bill. We work out deals with doctors, we have pricing. So you go out, you pay the bill. And it was a great thing that we did. So we've done a great job with the VA, but they had a report come out. And uh, the results of the report, it was a very unscientific report, by the way. But I get a lot of tremendously positive news on the hydroxy. And I say, hey, you know the expression I've used, John? What do you have to lose? OK, what do you have to lose? So I have, been, I have been taking it for about a week, for about a week and a half. Every day? At some point, every day. 
I take a pill every day. Uh, at some point, I'll stop. What I'd like to do is I'd like to have the cure and or the vaccine, and that'll happen, I think, very soon. And you've had no symptoms, sir? Zero symptoms. No, I haven't had any symptoms. No, I tested. We, I test every couple of days. They want to test me, you know, for obvious reasons. I mean, I am the president. So they want to test me. I don't want to be tested, but they want to test me. So every couple of days I get tested. And I've been, I've shown always uh, negative, right? Negative. Is that the term you use for this, right? Negative. Totally negative. No symptoms, no nothing. But no, I take it because I think uh, I hear very good things. Again, you have to go to frontline workers. Many frontline workers take it, and uh, they seem to be doing very well. Any other members of your administration, Vice President Pence, or your family? No, but I wouldn't be them? surprised. I, I don't want to ask them because that's a personal decision as to whether or not you want to say. I just want to be open with the American public because, you know, I happen to think it's good. I do want the letter given because this letter made uh, – not in terms of my taking it, but I thought it was a very well-crafted letter by a man who's a respected doctor up in Westchester, maybe a little beyond Westchester, a little up higher, and uh, in New York. And he just, he didn't want anything. He just wanted me to know the results of what he's doing as a doctor. And he was so happy with the fact that I, I fight for this stuff. And then we have this crazy whistleblower, this fake whistleblower get out and try and, you know, knock it. Uh, who was who signed the application? He he did all this. He did the signing. He was a believer at one point, I assume. Otherwise, he shouldn't have signed it. No matter who told him to, he shouldn't have signed it. Okay, one more question. That's it. Uh, thank you all very much. Nancy Pelosi said this about the president's decision. Watch. He's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientist, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, but is morbidly obese, they say. Uh, it looked like um, Anderson was smiling there. Dr. Osquey, since Pelosi doesn't listen to the facts, can you spell it out for her here? Is the drug safe, and is he right to take it as a prophylactic? Uh, I think that the drug is clearly safe. Looking at the package insert for Plaquenil, the branded hydroxychloroquine, there is no cardiac monitoring uh, prescribed by the FDA. It's been used for decades, safe with no cardiac monitoring. With the few studies you've seen are sloppily done where they don't control for electrolytes and other antivirals. I think the critical aspect here is it's very reasonable. There's, in India, for instance, there's a whole protocol of using prophylaxis uh, this drug is prophylaxis in healthcare workers. It's being studied in Spain for that reason. Uh, there's a lot of good reason to think this drug works from the molecular biology with coronaviruses back in 2005 to even data in the last six months. Uh, I think if I had problems with COVID-19 and the air conditioning of the White House like he did 10 days ago, according to uh, Dr. Carson, I'd probably take it too prophylactically. Dr. Lozano, the medical establishment went crazy, though, over this announcement. Watch. I'm not aware of an evidence base that would indicate that it's effective for this indication. That there is no evidence that tells us that taking hydroxychloroquine is either safe or effective. He shouldn't be taking it. There's right now, to be clear, no evidence that it works to treat this disease. Great group. Sit down, please. I thought maybe we'd bring in the fake news. We'll have them standing out. You'll make a nice statement on behalf of your company. We'll do a quick thing and go around the room. And uh, it's an honor to have you here. So these are uh, restaurants. What a great business to be in. But perhaps not this week, right? I saw you on television. Good job. Uh, Perhaps not this week, but it's, it'll get good. You know, we're trying to get deductibility, meaning companies uh, the old way. Remember the old days when a company could do deductions on entertainment, on restaurants and things? When they changed that, that was a disaster for the restaurant industry, if you remember. I remember that well. In fact, they actually tried to shame the restaurant industry. How dare you go to a restaurant? You know, it was like a big shame thing. But today we're back where we can, I think, probably get it back.
And uh, Steve, you're working on that very hard, right? Yes. Deductibility for entertainment, clubs, restaurants. I think it'll bring it. I think it'll bring it back. So uh, let's bring them in and uh, say a few words. We have markets only up 950 points, so hopefully that'll stay. A lot of positive things are happening. How's the book? How's it doing? You know it was good. Doing good? Hot, hot topic.